All right, welcome to this short video on how to set up database mail. We're going to do it a couple different ways. The first way we're going to do it is we're going to go in and set it up through the dialogues. And then after that, we're going to go in and attempt to set it up with scripts just to make it a little bit easier. Okay, so first off, what exactly is database mail? Well, database mail is a configuration inside of SQL Server that allows you to be able to programmatically send email. It can come from a stored procedure to send the email, or it can come from SQL Server agent jobs. But it's the basic thing of setting up a your configured database mail uh, mail account or a pro go to manage here and take a look real quick at this server i'm going to view change or delete an existing profile and basically if you've used microsoft outlook and you know how you can have your email account listed but the first time before you can see your email you have to go in and configure it to tell it what servers to use and things like that and you can have two or three or four accounts listed in outlook well same thing you can do here you can have multiple accounts listed to send emails but rather than outlook where you're sending and receiving this is only used for sending so for instance here we have a profile name called sql alerts we can click that drop down if there were other profiles we'd be able to see them in the list there and then sql alerts is mapped to an email address of server smtp at databasehealth.com if we wanted to look at that we can add or remove it if we wanted to edit the account we could go back and edit an account here and there's all the settings for it including the port SSL, passwords, everything like that. So basically what database mail is, is it's a configuration in SQL Server mapping an SMTP server that will allow you to send email. And with that, it maps it to a profile and then all of the commands or any of the settings that are related to sending email are mapped to a specific email profile. Let's get into the configuration. We're gonna start with a server called multi-SQL slash SQL 2019. And we're going to go into the management section of the object explorer and we're going to look at database mail down here. We're going to right click and say send a test email just to see if it's configured. And we get this message about there are no mail profiles. So that tells us it is not configured yet. Do you want to launch the mail configuration to create a new profile? Yes, actually, that's the next thing I was going to do. Had we not done that, we could have right clicked and just said new mail profile. So here we get the option to set up database mail by doing the following tasks. We're going to set it up. We hit yes. This happens the first time you use database mail usually. It says the database mail feature is not available. Would you like to enable this feature? We'll say yes. Profile name, we're going to call this Deadman Database. That's going to send email to Stedman Database at database health.com and I'm just going to copy that because we're going to use that later that's just a description you could have typed anything you wanted in there then we have to associate this with an SMTP account so we hit add here count name say database health.com and email address is going to be this we're just going to give it a display name of Stedman database we're going to leave the reply email blank and then the server name here needs to be whatever server name was provided by your administrator or your hosting company or wherever you're getting this SMTP account from. Of course, we're not using port 25 anymore because that's what all the spammers are using these days, it seems like. So we're going to give it a shot using SMTP port 587 here. And for this test, we're not going to use SSL. SSL getting it to work in database mail can be a bit challenging. So I'm going to try it first without, and then once that works, we can come back later and see about getting it configured using SSL. So basic authentication, we're going to need the username and that username is our email address. And I've got that from my password vault program and I'm just going to copy and paste it. I'm going to go and copy and paste the password as well from my password vault that you don't get to see just going to review this. We've got email account is Stedman database at databasehealth.com. It is going out through mail.databasehealth.com on port 587. And there's our basic authentication down below. And anonymous authentication isn't used very often anymore. You might have that on some internal mail server. So now that that's done, we hit next. We're going to make this public, meaning not public for the world, but anyone on the SQL server can use it. And we'll make that our default profile. So we'll hit next. 
at this point there's some extra settings that can be configured here usually i leave those alone unless there's some specific reason to do them i'll hit next again and what this is going to do is go out and create the account once it's finished now that all succeeded so i'm hoping at this point that everything is configured that we need in order to send database mail so now that we it takes us back to the send test i'm going to attempt to send to me steve at stedman solutions.com i'm going to send a test email and then i'm going to hit ok and then what i want to do is open a query window here and grab something from another query window i had prepared earlier you can just copy these queries we're going to use the msdb database because that's where all these tables are we're going to select from sys mail all items and we can see that there's one mail item there and it shows that it was sent so that's good news if it had failed that's where we need to go back and look at why it failed but as i jump over to my email on another window we can now see that here is the test email that came from Stedman database at databasehealth.com. And there we have it. Okay, now that we have configured database mail once, we're going to try and configuring it on a different server without using the dialogues and scripting it. Now, let's say you want to do this on 15 servers. That's a lot easier if you have it scripted out rather than going through all those dialogues. I've done it a couple times, and those dialogues can get really tedious. So I'm going to go here, multi-sql 2008, and I'm going to see if it's configured. And I test it, and it says, no, there's no database mail configured. So, so then what we're going to do is I'm going to open a new query editor window here. And I have a script that I prepared earlier. I shouldn't say I prepared earlier. Uh, ChatGPT prepared it for me, and we're going to give it a try. And we're going to go through here and just see if we can get it all working by manually entering each of these things what we're going to do is your profile name we're going to call this stedman email account name we'll also call that stedman email and then we put in the email address we're going to put that here display name we're going to say stedman database oh that's right we were calling this stedman database not stedman email the SMTP server in this case, I've got to go grab that and put it in here. The SMTP username is going to be the same thing that our email address is. Well, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tab all the way over here. And I'm going to put in the password off screen so that we can keep that private here. Sorry, not giving away everything in this video. The port we're going to use, oh, it defaulted to 587, which I think is what we needed to use, what we did in the previous demo. So that's good news. And then enable SSL. We're going to leave that as zero because that's what this mail server is configured as here. It's going to call sysmail add account SP that happens to use all the parameters we just filled in. And then it's going to call sysmail add profile SP and that's going to set up the profile and then it's going to add profile to associate the account to the profile so the profile is what sql server will identify it as so when we send email in sql server we'll be sending to stedman database but i'm just going to change the profile name stedman database mail here i'm just changing it as we go okay so we got that and then it's going to finish setting it up and making it public so it can be used okay great Okay, so if database mail hasn't been configured before, we need to enable that on the server before we can do any of this. If we do this and it's already been configured, it's just going to re-enable it. It's not going to hurt anything. So now what we're going to do is just try running this whole script and see if it works. Okay, that's all been run on this multi-SQL SQL 2008. I'm going to right-click on database mail and see if I can send a test now. I'm going to try sending it to me using a different address than the previous one just for fun. I'm going to send the test. There it is. I have received the mail and it tells you that this is a test email. It includes the server that it came from. So if you're testing this on multiple servers, you'll know that's it. That works. So what I'm going to do now 
is take that same script and I'm going to use the registered servers feature here and open up connections to 17 different servers and I'm now going to run that script. Now I expect because we've already set up mail on SQL 2008 and SQL 2019 on here that it's probably going to fail when we attempt to do this. But I'm just going to give it a try and I'm going to run this on all those servers and see what happens. Let's see here. This is all the output from showing the advanced options. And then here we go. Name must be unique because SQL 2008 is failing because it was already done. Oh, and SQL 2019 didn't fail because I used a different name than I did when I set that one up. Okay, so that should all be working now. Of course, the next thing we have to do is to test this. So what I'm going to do is clear out our configuration script here, paste in the test mail, and our profile name was named Stedman Database Mail. We're going to go copy that, paste it here. Recipients, I'm going to send this to me. Test message and then body. And then up here, I'm going to declare body as var char max. And I'm going to set the body equal to test database mail from in the body. I'm going to concatenate at, at server name. And of course, I have to spell correctly. Declare. I don't need the as. There we go. Okay. Declare. And I'm going to try sending this. And if this works, I should get email from 17 SQL servers. However, we keep in mind that some of those 17 are SQL Server Express. I don't believe that the mail, database mail, works this way on SQL Server Express. So we should, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So of the 17 servers, it should probably fail, or at least not work, on seven of them that are SQL Server Express. But we'll give it a try and run it using this connection. Okay, it says they're all queued. Now we'll go look and check my mail and see what I got. All right, so at this point, we can see that I've configured database mail on all of those servers, and it appears to be working at this point. I think that wraps it up.